If you're watching this recording, we are setting things up to include Facebook on the Zoom broadcast and on the YouTube broadcast. So please be patient for a couple minutes. Probably won't take two minutes. I'm waiting for Krista Carter to give me the thumbs up. Okay, looks like we're on the air. People are starting or will start to populate um, the session. I don't see that. I think you do, Krista. Are they starting to come in on Zoom? Okay. Hello, everybody. So I'm going to take just a second to burn up a couple minutes so everybody can join us. This is Mark Castell broadcasting live from uh, Rockton, Wisconsin, in between Lafarge and Ontario in the picturesque Kick Kickapoo River Valley. And um, I have my hat on today. You'll notice I have my hat on because my uh, hairstylist and makeup artist have been off duty for the last seven months. If I took my hat off, you'll see that I've been using, I wish I could emulate his intelligence, but I've been using uh, Albert Einstein as a model for my hairdo. So it's a little bit wild right now. Um, so Krista, you're gonna give me two thumbs up when we're ready. Okay, I guess we're ready. So. Uh, thanks for being patient to the people who are coming in here. So this is Mark Castell with Organic Eye. And uh, I have a background of about uh, 30 years, 35 years involved in the organic industry. Uh, we used to call it an organic movement, organic farming movement. I was a certified organic farmer uh, long before uh, the USDA got involved when it was voluntary and we were trying to prove to our consumer audience, our customers, the eaters out there that that we were authentic and legitimate. We're still trying to prove that um, in spite of the USDA's actions. Um, and uh, I did, uh, based on my business background, a number of years of uh, business development work, mostly with uh, farmer-owned cooperatives and farm-owned ventures. Farmer-owned ventures uh, helped establish one of the largest organic brands in the country uh, and also at the same time worked as a registered lobbyist for the Farmers Union here in Wisconsin and the National Farmers Union on uh, mostly dairy policy but on farm policy. Um, and for the last 16 years, I've acted as an organic industry watchdog because uh, predictably, as this became a very lucrative industry, uh, we have a lot of people who would like to use that organic label for marketing purposes without doing the heavy lifting, and that's uh, defrauding us, uh, the folks who really want authenticity. Uh, organic Eye is just over a year old. It is an uh, investigative arm of uh, Beyond Pesticides. Uh, Beyond Pesticides is based in Washington, D.C. Uh, I work out of my uh, office and farm here on the west coast of Wisconsin. Um, our offices are closed in Washington right now, and I have missed a number of my visits out there this year uh, due to the pandemic, but bear with us. We're available on phone and email. Um, organ uh, Beyond Pesticides is um, almost 40 years old now. They've been fighting toxins in our food and our environment, including on your front lawn, your playground, your school, um, together with the um, executive director, Jay Feldman, and uh, Ter Dr. Terry Schuster, and um, myself as director of Organic Eye. We have uh, somewhere around 120 years of experience in doing farm policy work specifically related to organics. So organics is the answer to getting toxins out of our food and uh, toxins to a great degree of, out of our environment. So before I be begin, I wanna say that if you have a question uh, or a comment um, and you're on Facebook, uh, please use the comments feature and our assistant out there, who I will introduce in a few minutes, will um, record that and we'll, we'll have an opportunity to answer those questions. If you're on Zoom, you want to use the chat feature and uh, we will similarly read your question on air. And thanks for your input in advance. Uh, so first, uh, we know why people initially uh, choose organics. And 
Um, and if you want to dispute that, you can do it through the comments feature. But there's uh, research um, that uh, basically shows that, uh, that illustrates that the number one reason people come to organics is because what's not in there, what we're trying to avoid. And that's toxic agrochemical residue and uh, drug residue when it comes to um, when it comes to an animal products, whether it's meat, milk, dairy. Um, believe it or not, um, there are antibiotics used in um, horticulture, uh, for instance, as a control to f for fire blight on apples and pears. So if you don't want antibiotic residues in your tree fruit, you need to choose organic. But I will testify to you that one of the uh, key reasons we should be choosing organic, and many folks are um, uh, not, um, uh, you know, cognizant of this, or it's, it's not in the format, is not because what's missing in organics, what we're trying to avoid, what's in there. And that's if we properly steward the land, if we're concerned with soil fertility, number one concern, um, we, we get pests, we get plants that don't have pest pressure because they're healthy, but that leads to higher level of nutrients, antioxidants, when it comes to milk and meat and eggs, uh, co protective compounds like omega-3 3 fatty acids or CLA, a protective amino acid. So we don't find those compounds that are protective of general health anti-cancer compound, we don't find them at as high a level in uh, conventional produce or conventional food. So um, at, at all times, of all times, where we're facing this pandemic, where we know that underlying chronic health problems are uh, a key factor for uh, 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 deaths and, and really uh, bad outcomes, uh, we should be, as a society, concentrating on food and that means organic. So why choose organic yogurt? So I'm, I'm gonna talk about principally yogurt here today, but uh, a lot of what I'm gonna say in general can pertain to other organic dairy products. And um, so it's all about the cows, folks. It's the cows and where they live and how they're cared for. So we know that when, uh, Cows were created by God to graze out on pasture. I could look out my window here, and there aren't any cows out there today, but there have been. And uh, they create uh, healthier milk because they're healthier. They live long, healthy lives. So if we love cows, if, if we want them to live a rich, respected life while they're here on this planet, um, they need to be out there eating grass instead of in a building or in a feedlot being force fed uh, really high levels of protein and other supplements that are unnatural. It creates um, the, the average in conventional dairies and it's not much, much different in organic factory farms, um, but they might live only a year and a half after they start milking them. I have some uh, farmers who joke with me who suggest that um, that, they, that some of their cows will be old enough to vote pretty soon. So um, uh, we, we know we take care of the cows better, they take care of us better because we get richer, more uh, nutrient dense food. Um, so it, it directly relates to um, the quality of our food when, when cows are managed organically and not all cows are managed organically. So I'm, even with the organic label. So I'm gonna talk about that in a second. The other besides for the nutrient content, the quality of their life is um, not only could we find agrochemical residues in milk or other toxins, uh, but um, drug residues potentially and uh, hormones. So when I was with the farmers union, I was one of the key uh, representatives of the farming community fighting Monsanto's genetically engineered bovine growth hormone, BGH. That is in the milk and it elevates higher levels of uh, IgA, uh, um, insulin-like growth factor, uh, which is uh, a compound which is identical in bovine milk and human milk. So we're, um, 
going to react to that. And there's concerns that has a relationship to uh, breast cancer, or potentially prostate cancer. So we don't want those things in our milk, but we want that better milk. We want, we, we're willing to pay more for organics, not just for ourselves, but because we think the cows are living a better life. The farmers are being respected and, and fairly compensated. And we think we're having a positive impact on the earth. So yogurt, what's yogurt? Yogurt's milk. And it's in its most basic form, it's milk plus a culture. That's it. Um, and uh, we, we as a species started culturing milk before we had refrigeration. So you could leave your yogurt out on the counter. It's not going to instantly go bad or go bad as quickly as fluid milk does. We refrigerate it today, and that's the safest thing to do. But we made cheese and we made yogurt as a way to preserve milk. Um, is it beneficial? Well, there, there's a myriad of studies out there. Some of them conflict. But um, these cultures add uh, probiotics. And uh, we are learning more and more about gut health and the microbiome in our digestive system. And um, I can tell you that 30 years ago when I had a health crisis, likely from uh, pesticide poisoning, and that's when I got involved in organics, I had been involved in conventional agriculture, um, I ate copious amounts of yogurt. It's a great drug if you have uh, any fungal problems. Um, it, it, it acts as a, you know, we'll, Instead of calling it a drug, we'll call it a nutrient. Um, so uh, junk food versus health food. So there are a lot of parents, mothers and fathers, who choose yogurt for breakfast, for their entire family, for their children, maybe a small cup in their lunchbox, because it's really been sold as junk, junk food, as health food. And I can remember back in, I'm going to say the 70s, the first yogurt that was really popular in America was Dannon, Dannon's brand. They used to use uh, uh, video from Russia, from people that were living a long time and equating that to yogurt. So yogurt's always had a, a golden reputation for, for health impacts. And, but I can tell you not all yogurt is healthy. Obviously we know there are safety concerns with conventional yogurt, we've already talked about that. Um, but what are they putting in there besides milk? So a couple of years ago at a uh, farming conference, somebody brought this container of the yogurt to me to check out and their jaw dropped. They, they bought this in La Crosse, Wisconsin. They were attending the largest organic farming conference in the country. And um, yogurt that's just pure milk, cultured milk, has a sugar level of uh, um, 8 to 10 um, uh, grams of sugar, and um, that's naturally occurring lactose, so that's natural sugar. This product per serving, and a serving is one cup, had a, um, uh, has 40, I'm sorry, 41 grams of sugar, 41 grams in one cup. I think my teeth would be hurting. This stuff will kill you, literally. We know about diabetes and prediabetes as a chronic problem in America and a major risk factor when it comes to, um, a major risk factor when it comes to the coronavirus night now. So not all yogurt is uh, healthy. and. I know my techno guru out there is going to be a mad at me, but I have to do one technical thing off camera. And so everybody just let me introduce Krista Carter. So you put yourself on the air in the big screen here. Krista is our uh, technical expert. She's based in um, uh, Brooklyn, New York, not in Wisconsin. So I'll be right back. That was the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen on video. Um, it's not Krista's fault. I forgot to turn off one of my devices. I want to make sure we had adequate bandwidth here. And I don't know if it'll make, I'll be really embarrassed if it doesn't make any difference. Um, so at any rate, don't buy junk food. And there, there's plenty of uh, organic junk food out there. 
back when I first started working professionally in this industry in about 1989, um, uh, we used to joke that someday there would be an organic Twinkie. I'm glad to say there isn't one yet, but there are the equivalent of organic o Oreos. And so uh, you should really be looking at food. We should be eating as much whole food as possible, not processed food, not loaded with sugar, even if it's certified organic sugar. So uh, let's talk about a brand comparison because we got comp conventional yogurts, we've got what I'll call organic light. It's got the organic seal on it, the USDA seal. Uh, and then we have really authentic organic, and that's what I'm gonna be encouraging you to seek out because it's gonna be re rewarding the, the best farmers and the best companies who wanna partner with you and they deserve to make a good living for doing this right. And your family deserves the very best. So first of all, private label organics. I say that's an oxymoron. I don't have a container to show you um, because I don't shop at Target, Walmart, Costco, Safeway, Kroger, um, the most prominent supplier of private label organic milk in a carton or in some of the other finished products is Aurora Dairy. They have a series of, um, I won't call them farms, I'll call them dairies in Texas and, and Colorado with thousands of cows each. We partnered with research with the Washington Post that did an investigation that prove the allegations that I had made for years after visiting the facilities, after hiring an aircraft to fly over these facilities. They were not grazing their cattle adequately. And uh, we filed a number of legal complaints against them and their friends at the USDA basically slapped them on the wrist or let them off the hook. But the interesting thing about this Washington Post article, and I will post a link, of, link to it on our social media. Make a note of that, please, Krista. And um, uh, and our website is that they actually tested the milk for some of these compounds like omega-3 fatty acids that I referenced before. And the Aurora milk, the level was so low compared to other grass-based organic dairies, their level was so low, it was, be, it was below some conventional brands. So if you want what you're pay, paying for, th those brands are no bargain, whether it's in milk or private label yogurt. If you want to patronize a store, Trader Joe's, Type them an email, say, I want to know where your yogurt is manufactured and who supplies the milk. Most of these companies will not share it. It's a secret. When I did that myself a couple of years ago, I actually got a phone call from the CEO of uh, Trader Joe's. That had never happened before. I usually get a kind letter from Safeway saying, we don't participate in surveys. The CEO bawled me out on the phone telling me, I'll never tell you that. It's a trade secret. So. You're the customers, they want your money. If you do get any response, substantive response, please email it to me. And uh, we appreciate your work as organic watchdogs also. So there are a couple of big major brands. Um, one is Horizon. It used to be owned by Dean Foods, the largest dairy in the country. Uh, today it's owned by uh, Group Danon in France, one of the largest dairies in the world or Danon here in North America. Um, and I don't know where their yogurt comes from. It's a trade secret. About half of their milk it, that's marketed under the Horizon label comes from mel um, farms west of the Mississippi. It might be more than half now. Uh, they've laid off some of their family farmers. Uh, those are coming from giant factory farms like Aurora. If you're buying Horizon milk on the East Coast, it's likely coming from a family farm in the Northeast. So that's a mixed bag. You can bang on them for a while. Another giant uh, agribusiness controlled brand is Stonyfield. They're doing it a little different though. Stonyfield used to be owned by Dannon and I orchestrated a um, antitrust challenge in the Justice Department when, when, uh, when uh, Dannon bought the Horizon land brand, forced them to separate Stonyfield. So now that's owned by a company called Lactalis, also in France. Uh, the difference is, and uh, as far as I know, this hasn't changed. Um, the Stonyfield brand is supplied by all family farms in the Northeast for their yogurt. So at least you're uh, supporting those family farmers. Um, and they're proving that a big corporation doesn't have to sell out organic values. Same thing with General Mills. They entered the 
yogurt business by buying, um, by launching the Annie's brand um, and Liberté, I think that's still organic. Uh, you can check that out and confirm that. But they were buying again from a cooperative of all family farmers. But I wanna shift gears because I, I wanna tell you what's in my kitchen, Castell's kitchen, and I wanna tell you what I think is the very best yogurt. And I don't have a container for all the ones that I think are the best in the country. I'm lucky enough to have visited many of these farms. Uh, this is the container from Seven Stars. They're in Phoenixville, uh, Pennsylvania by um, Philadelphia. It's made on the farm. It's a farmstead dairy as they've grown. Uh, they've bought from some other small farms. Um, but uh, what's in their yogurt? Their yogurt is milk, uh, unhomogenized. Uh, I don't know if they're still doing vat pasteurization. Many of these smaller farms slowly heat the milk more gently in a vat. Um, and they were the last time I was there, which is some years ago now. But they, um, they don't homogenize, so you're gonna find the cream top. And uh, it's as gently a processed product as you can find. So that is really a traditional yogurt. Um, when I'm out of yogurt, and I'll talk about my own yogurt in a second, I buy seven stars, sometimes by the case. Um, two other brands that I want to uh, highlight because they're just as good, maybe better, they're wonderful. Uh, one is uh, Butterworks Farms in Vermont. I know Vermont is a very sophisticated state when it comes to um, organics. They might have more as a percentage organic farmers than any other um, uh, any other state in the nation. Um, and their, their Butterworks yogurt is available in some other uh, Midwestern or um, uh, New England states. And uh, that's just a wonderful yogurt. Uh, Jack and Ann Laser have been mentors to many, many other farmers uh, in the organic community and deserve a lot of credit. Hang on a second. Krista, I just work here. The cats are in charge. And when one needs to go somewhere, I jump to attention right away. Um, so besides for Seven Stars and uh, Butterworks, I wanna give a big shout out to Hawthorne Valley, which is in, I think it's Gantt, New York. Um, that's a, a um, biodynamic and certified organic brand. They do some other dairy products. Uh, just an incredibly fine, again, farmstead dairy. All three of these are making yogurt on the farm. Um, you won't find a lot of flavors. I don't know if any of them make a small cup, um, but if you, um, I wanna talk a little bit about flavored versus plain yogurt. I'm really a big proponent of plain yogurt. You can buy many of those best yogurts uh, sweetened with uh, maple syrup or vanilla, I believe they all have that. Um, but most commercial yogurts contain fruit flavors. A lot of times that fruit, and maybe all the time, because I haven't been able to track it all down, comes from China. I'm sorry, I don't trust China for any product, let alone what I'm eating myself or what you might wanna feed your families. Um, and, uh, and it's always sweetened. So look very carefully at the label for the amount of sugar content in those products. So again, even if they're organic, that doesn't mean they're healthy. I have yogurt every morning on granola, sometimes homemade, very lightly sweetened granola. That's plenty of sweetener. If I put some uh, raisins in, I cut up some apples, I slice bananas, I have fresh berries while they're in season. I don't need uh, a sweetener in my yogurt. It's got the lactose, it's naturally sweet. The granola might have some sweetener. Be careful the one you buy, it might be very sweet. And the fruit itself uh, has sweetener. So for, in terms of um, uh, breakfast, very, very often I'll have uh, oatmeal with yogurt, maybe a little bit of unpasteurized milk in there, fresh milk and, um, and fresh fruit and nuts. And it's plenty of sweet enough for me, depending on what kind of fruit I'm eating. You could always sprinkle 
a little honey or a little maple syrup if you or your kids need it sweeter. But I think you get used to things if you're not eating commercially that are a little less sweet. Okay, there are a lot of other great organic brands out there. I'm gonna put a list of a few of the ones I think are very credible on the website. Um, but one that I buy in some traditional groceries when I'm not at my um, uh, um, store, in my one of the member-owned co-ops I shop at is Maple Hill. It's 100% grass-fed. And it's, again, very traditional. I don't think they put anything in there. A lot of the other yogurts, uh, like the Horizon yogurt is an example, is very stiff uh, and like it looks like Dannon uh, um, and it doesn't weigh off. I'll talk to you about that. Uh, and, and that's because they add something to it. They add milk powder to it. They, some God forbid might add carrageenan, uh, some, uh, or, or some other thickening agent. Some add, might add pectin which is a byproduct of citrus, but it's conventional pectin that they're contaminating organic yogurt with. So, um, so Seven Stars, Maple Hill, they don't put anything else in there. So you'll get what's in the industry we call weighing off. You'll take a few spoonfuls out and you'll get a little pocket in there and it'll fill with a liquid. Well, that's dairy whey. Don't throw it away. The two things you can do with it, one, if you soak your grains overnight, like the Weston A. Price Foundation suggests, uh, to kind of start them out at room temperature, fermenting, making them more digestible. You can add just a little bit of whey in there um, while you prepare your grains, and then they're really easier to cook the next day, your oatmeal or brown rice or whatever. Um, or my cats love it, so I put it in their cat food, and they think that's a real treat. So don't throw that away. If um, there's another brand which when I travel is really easy to find and right down the road where I live here in the Kikubu Valley is the Organic Valley Company store. They make an all grass fed product and, um, and it's made a little differently and um, it's all organic and it comes from family scale farms. So, the, you know, I, when I travel, whether it's cheese or butter or yogurt, um, or fluid milk. Organic Valley is my default because I know I can find that almost all places in the country. A lot of these other brands, you're gonna have to contact them, find out where it's sold in your area, or uh, you know, certainly if you have a member-owned um, cooperative, that's a go-to place for these better brands of yogurt. Whole Foods carries many of them, so you might have to do a little bit of research. Um, my own yogurt, I buy fresh unpasteurized milk from a neighbor's farm, happens to be all um, uh, Normandy bread. Uh, Normandy is the breed, very rich, beautiful milk. Um, and uh, uh, I make my own yogurt. It's so easy, folks. If you have access to really great milk, um, you just uh, temper it by raising the temperature to 180 degrees. Some people can do it. and try to keep it raw at a lower temperature, and uh, then you let it cool down to 110 degrees, and you inoculate it with some leftover yogurt from your last batch or buying a great organic yogurt, and um, I'll put a recipe on, my, uh, on the website for that myself. Uh, uh, Krista, if you remind me, please. And um, okay, great, I, I gotta let her in now. doesn't want to be on the air. She's a little shy. She's a cat. Um, so um, uh, you incubate, I incubate mine in the oven. Some people incubate it in a uh, sink full of warm water, but I'll put my recipe on the website um, and uh, we'll have some other follow-up material based on yogurt. So I want to interject again that if you have a question or a comment you want to use, and we, I, got, I got a few here. Um, we want to use um, uh, the comments feature on Facebook and the chat feature on Zoom. And if you don't have time to hang through to the end here, uh, this will be posted on our Facebook page, archived, and on the YouTube channel for Organic Eye. And uh, you can scroll, you know, skip through what you've already watched and watch it to the end on there if necessary. I also want to invite you to um, help Organic Eye 
in just over our first year of existence, do this industry watchdog work. Um, you could certainly join. We'd be honored to have you as a member. We have no minimum donation. Um, whether you donate $5 or $5,000 on our website or through the mail, click on that donate button, organic.org. Obviously, uh, your money helps fuel this mission, but you give us the moral authority to speak out. So I would respectfully ask you to consider that. If you're not ready to pony up and join, we have a free news service that you can sign up for and or um, follow us on social media. That helps us and share the archived version of this broadcast if you think it was of value. So um, let's help the best farmers protect uh, organic food, uh, protect the environment, protect these cows. And I really thank you for uh, quite a few people tuning in here. So Krista, do you wanna uh, go on the air, just say hello, introduce yourself, and Krista's gonna read all of us, so I don't have to look at that small type flashing across the screen. Uh, she's going to read some questions. Sure. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, there are quite a few questions, Mark, so I actually want to bypass any sort of introduction of myself to make sure that we get to these folks. Okay, we'll, do, we'll, we'll pick on you next time. <laughs> and so if you can consolidate any when I'm answering sure. some, try to do that. And, and, I'm, and if, if you need to abbreviate them, that's fine. And I will answer as quick as possible so we can get, sure. them, get them in here. So can you first talk a little bit about the connection between climate change and buying organic food? Well... Um, I would say there's two types of agriculture. One is petrochemical based agriculture and the other is solar based agriculture. So if we grow, if, if we're talking about dairy, uh, conventional dairy and confinement organic dairy, those factory farms that are pretending to be dairy, they um, might ship feed in literally from around the world to feed those animals and uh, burn up diesel fuel. They all the uh, cows urinate and defecate in one place, so they have to take that manure and ship that away. So this is especially true in organic eggs, very concentrated. A lot of times the organic hen house is the only thing organic on the farm. All the fields are conventional. They buy all their feed. And so the wonderful organic manure that we can compost and recycle the nutrients is going on conventional land. So I, this is a complicated question I can't really elaborate a lot on, but I can just say that when we practice organic agriculture, we're trying to do away with petrochemical based agriculture and that is really deleterious to the environment. Great. So there were a couple of comments and just questions about like yogurt being in plastic containers. Yes. Um, do you have any suggestions for yogurt in non-plastic containers for those who are trying to support truly recyclable sure, containers? Sure, sure. It, it's a good point. It, plastic packaging in all food is really challenging. I can't find cheese that's not in, in plastic. Even the very, very best grass-fed organic artisanal cheese is mostly found in plastic. There are a couple brands of um, yogurt that are in glass and I can't uh, remember the names of them right offhand. And it, again, it's off camera. I have one of the jars in the other room. So you could do a little research on that. That's one of the advantages of making your own yogurt and buying wonderful organic milk. Raw unpasteurized milk is legally sold in about half the states. And so you wanna make sure it's, it's organically produced. Just being uh, raw and fresh does not uh, guarantee you the best, safest milk. And you wanna make sure they're grazing their cattle. Um, and there are some risks involved. You should educate yourself. There are also great benefits nutritionally. Um, so I buy my milk, I get it in two quart glass jars and I incubate it in glass. So that is a real advantage, but I do eat uh, a lot of seven stars yogurt too when I need to buy it and I, when I'm on the road. So um, we can all keep working towards that better solution. So speaking of seven stars, there's a couple of questions just about certain brands. Someone was wondering, do you know why seven stars discontinued all of their varieties except for unflavored? I do not know. You you could contact them directly and I'd be interested in knowing either that I haven't bought it in years because I'm very, since I had my health problem, very sensitive to sugars. I'm, I'm in great health now. Um, 
and uh, but I could tell you the maple vanilla was to kill for. It was like eating ice cream. It was fantastic. There is no reason why you can't take some organic maple syrup and some organic vanilla that you can buy from. Uh, there's an organic co-op out there that produces it frontier. Um, and add those either to the whole quart or just to a bowl, and you'll have to experiment with the ratio. But there's no reason you can't make the same thing yourself. So sorry, I don't have the answer. So I'm going to give you just a couple of different brands, and then you can kind of speak to all of them at once. Do you have any suggestions for Wisconsin yogurt? What about Nancy's from Oregon? And then also questions about Siggy's because although they don't use organic milk, they're seen as a more healthful option because of the low added sugar. Okay, I'm writing down these things. <laughs> um, so, um, and I was gonna mention Nancy's and I, I'll do that. I, I think I missed some, this should have been a two hour session. Um, uh, so first of all, uh, Wisconsin yogurt, uh, I don't know that many organic ones, so I'm, I'm gonna go back to Organic Valley I saw a rumor flash across the screen they might be discontinuing this. That'd be too bad for me because that's a great, great, great product. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the West Coast because I don't know that you can get seven stars out there. When I'm traveling out West, I really like Strauss yogurt. It's a little conflict for me because um, Albert Strauss, um, they were pioneering, his parents were pioneering organic families, but it's an area very hard to uh, pasture. And Albert had the audacity to partner with Organic Aurora Dairy and fight stricter regulations trying to get these factory farms to graze. I think he's since come around a little bit, but Albert doesn't like me. And, uh, but he makes really good yogurt. Um, and uh, Nancy's is an iconic brand. I think they're in um, somewhere in Oregon and it's available um, in much of the country, but out West. I personally don't like it as much as a thicker, more custardy yogurt. It's a little tangier. Some people love that yogurt. I know they're buying from all family farms that supply their milk. So it's a really good option if, you know, you should be trying a lot of these brands. Don't take Mark Castell's word for this, other than the integrity component. You, you need to choose the one you love. And Clover Storm uh, Sonoma nor, um, by Pen in Petaluma, um, the largest organic brand in the uh, fluid milk I know in the Bay Area, that's a wonderful um, group. And I've never tried their yogurt. So I, I better try that next time I'm out there. Okay, um, did I miss anything? Oh, Siggy's. Um, it's not organic. I don't eat non-organic food. So it might be a nice company. It might taste good. I mean, once in a while, I eat some kind of cheese from Europe that I can't get here. It's a pretty rare occasion. And when I eat at restaurants, I, you know, I'm eating the best food and a lot of, of the better farm to fork restaurants, I'm getting organic and local food but um, I don't compromise on dairy products, especially. So sorry, and that'll be your judgment call. Great. Um, so we're gonna shift gears just a little bit. How many cows and acres and how large should an organic dairy farm be at the largest end? I love that question. I've been asked that by the media many a time. You're not a reporter, are you? Um, so um, it's like, um, I can't remember the Supreme Court justice who, who once said, um, about pornography. I, I can't describe it to you, but I, I, I know it when I see it. Um, the cows on real organic farms, I, we polled these a few years ago. They averaged about one cow per acre. And cows can only walk so far. <clears throat> so um, there's one farm in Wisconsin, uh, Jim Greenberg, who has, I think, 600 cows. That's a really big farm in Wisconsin, really big organic farm. The average is probably less than 100, well, less than 100. But I've been on Jim's farm. He was an expert grazer before he ever became organic. He has miles of roads, separate paddocks fenced in with water. The, his cows have to, I asked Jim, how far do your cows have to walk as you rotate to fresh grass every day? A mile, you can't, you know, so how much bigger can you be from 600? There are some organic dairies that are milking thousands. We're talking about 5,000 to 20,000 cows and pretending to graze. And uh, some of them don't have one cow per acre. They have five or more cows per acre in the desert. And if I've always said from a technical standpoint, I call that a stretch. But some of those dairies out west 
are cutting hay off the same field that they're supposedly grazing their cattle on, thousands of cows. We don't know what percentage they're cutting and storing versus um, uh, letting their cows graze, but pretend it's half. That would be, for some dairies, an effective stocking rate of five, uh, I'm sorry, 10 to 15 cows an acre. I call that in technical terms, a joke. So how big can you be? Hundreds, certainly. Um, can you be a thousand? Boy, if you're a masterful person in a unique environment, I can't tell you you can't do it, but above that, forget it. And, and even a thousand, that's, that's really an anomaly. Great. Krista? Yeah, so we have just two more. Okay. Um, Thanks for one, consolidating these. Of course. So there are a lot of non-dairy yogurt options. Oh, good, as good. Mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you have any recommendations for what to look for for someone who doesn't eat dairy products? And are there ingredients that you want to yeah. make sure to yeah. avoid? That, that's a really good question. Um, plant, quote, plant-based um, uh, dairy and meat are becoming really popular. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm a skeptic. There are exceptions. There are some that, that might very well be uh, nutritious. But, um, you know, for instance, the soy milk milk was kind of the first uh, player out there. There are some concerns with soy proteins and how they might act as uh, uh, phytoestrogens. And, and you should Google that because we don't have time to go into that. But um, the one thing about soy or almond it is it has some protein. You should compare. There's this panel called Nutritional Facts, Nutrition Facts, that the FDA requires to be on yogurt. You should be a good, make a good comparison. There's a lot of oat products. You know, they combine a few soybeans and water or oats and water, and they charge as much or more than organic yogurt in a lot of cases. So you should look at those nutritional facts and assure yourself that you're getting comparable nutrition because I don't think there's any protein or appreciable protein in oats, but there are in almonds. But there aren't very many almonds in a whole deal. So be a good consumer. Now, this is especially true for uh, vegans. So we're neutral at Organic Eye and Beyond Pesticides in terms of um, people's choices, whether you're making a choice to be a vegan uh, for ethical reasons or because you believe they're healthier. There's a difference between plant-based, what they call plant-based in the industry, and vegetarian food. So I eat a lot of vegetarian food. I eat you know, bean tortillas, I put some cheese on top. Um, and um, uh, I eat Indian food, which is fantastic with uh, chickpeas or garbanzo beans, or they call that chana. And I get my protein, complete proteins I, on brown rice. Um, but um, for people who aren't eating meat, this plant-based is kind of a misnomer because a lot of times certain products, you know, yogurt might be a pretty plain uh, um, product that might qualify for vegans. But a lot of these products, especially these um, imitation meats, these meat analogs contain um, protein isolates. So they're taking components, they're, they're highly, highly processed. So I'm really encouraging people to eat whole foods. I was eating whole foods before there is any um, uh, store using that uh, moniker. And uh, so the the closest you eat to whole fresh food, the healthier you're going to be. So um, please be careful when you're buying non-dairy yogurts. As I've suggested, be careful when you're buying dairy yogurts. Read the ingredients. My number one mantra, never buy anything, never eat anything you can't pronounce. Okay, do we have one or a couple more? And yeah, so there's one more and it's just a... It's more of like kind of a me thing, but it's a confirmation for you. So you said a lot of things about the higher levels of protective antioxidants and organic food. Are you going to be able to send out or put together a list of references for folks? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you do that with Google. Sure. I, I am basing that statement on peer reviewed published research. It's out there. Um, I want to plug a great show. It's available on my community radio station, Food Sleuth uh, News or Food Sleuth, food sleuth Radio. So she's the Food Sleuth, um, Melinda Hamelgard. And um, it's available on the web and she's a nutritionist. So um, 
and has a bunch of really great guests. So I'm sure she has some archive show. There are, this won't be surprising because it's the same people that are involved in the drug industries. You know, it's dueling science. So there are um, conservative agribusiness, agrochemical funded um, uh, uh, think tanks that have backed research that shows that organic food is dangerous. It's no, uh, you could get food, foodborne illness more likely from them. Forget it. Um, they're, they're, it's no more dangerous, let's put it that way. It's, it, you know, you should be careful with the, how you handle and choose all your food. Um, but they're also claiming there's no nutritional benefit, but that's the dueling science part. There's um, uh, suggestions and you can look at the studies been done on tomato products, on the, as I mentioned, the two compounds, CLA and um, uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, in dairy, we have a skewed, our omega-3 traditionally for our species, omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is usually pretty balanced. Uh, in America and in modern diets, we eat way too much corn and um, grain-based products and, and, and then we eat um, our meat and dairy that is uh, produced in confinement conditions, fed grains, and we have very low levels of omega-3. So, um, do your research, do your homework. It's out there. I appreciate the question, but it's not really our uh, part of our core mission, the nutritional part. We're protecting the integrity of your food. So when you do buy organic products, you're really getting that superior nutrition. Is that it, Krista? Yes. Okay. I want to thank everybody who's hung in there. Um, you folks have tolerated me for 45 minutes and I really appreciate it. Share this with your friends on Facebook, if you are on Facebook, will this be on Instagram, Krista? I can put it on Instagram. Okay, share it on Instagram. Um, you can share the promotional email we sent out with your friends. If they click on the link for the Facebook page, they will get the archived edition, or they can seek us out by searching us on Organic Eye on um, YouTube. Krista, any last words of wisdom before we sign off? No, I think it's great. Thank okay. you so much. It's a, Beautiful sunny day, besides for a great diet, make sure you get outside, move your body, soak up some vitamin D from the sunlight while there's still a chance to do that. And um, thanks again and, and eat well.